he's got a, a hot, smart wife, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. He's an organ transplant psychiatrist. So he gets to, you know, gets to <coughs> help people a lot of the time, and you know, and I mean, it sounds like a good gig, but well, that's that's what made it so interesting to write because Ben's wife Renata is a psychologist. They both have um, busy lives, good jobs, money. They're comfortable. Um, they certainly started out in their marriage, loving each other and, and enjoying their company, but things have gone sour. So for me, as a novelist, it's really, really interesting to go deep into these lives that seem so fine on the surface and take a look at what's bubbling underneath. I was thinking of ginger ale not bubbling. It's because <laughs> it things really go sour, just kind of, but it's kind of flat. They're flat. They're, the marriage is flat. I, I see them as sort of overworked, exhausted, um, spiritually bereft. And also, there's a big issue because they weren't able to have a child. And for Ben in particular, this is, is very, very important. Um, the idea of passing something on to the next generation. I mean, basically, what's bugging Ben is he's angst-ridden, and uh, he's looking for meaning. Now, his job is, is wonderful in that he does help people, but um, there's a problem with that. As an organ transplant psychiatrist, his job is to evaluate people who want to get on the list for an organ, and he's going to say no to some of those people. And he also has to psychologically assess someone who wants to donate an organ to someone they don't know well. And he's going to say no to those people, too, some of those people, anyway. So the job involves uh, life and death questions, right? And some of the answers that he gives are negative, and that's one of the things that's bugging him, that's really eating at him. He meets a, uh, a man that he's assessing. Yes. Arthur is, I mean, he, he basically thinks he's just a little bonky that he's going to give his kidney to a, a woman he barely knows. Right. And he's looking for, he's looking for the why. And then they accidentally meet outside and he has to deal with Arthur in a different way. That's right. They have poetry in common, which is a big surprise. Um, he is, it is his job to make sure that Arthur knows what he's doing and um, that there are no ulterior motives. And uh, there are some clues in the book later on that maybe Arthur did have another reason. Maybe there was some guilt in his mind that he wanted to sort of work out by altruistically donating his kidney. And these things have to come to light. This is true. This is what has to happen in a psychological evaluation. These things have to come to light before the doctor can make his recommendation to the transplant team, right? yay or nay. I really liked Arthur. Good. <laughs> more, the, the more the book comes along, it's like, oh, I want to hop on a train to Colbert and meet Arthur. Meet Arthur. <laughs> yeah. See how the garlic's coming along. There's a bit of Arthur in all of us, and that was um, that for me is the underlying theme that there is the capacity for growth and for goodness and for generosity and for altruism in all of us. And under Arthur's influence, Ben discovers that within himself, and that's a huge change for for someone looking for meaning and purpose in life and. Finding beauty is is enormous. Yeah, there's a, a moment where he's on the train thinking about his, his his wife and staring into a cup of tea, which he's seen her do over and over and over again, and usually just like wondering what rotten thing she's thinking about him <laughs> next, or or how he detests her tea, and and then and he, but he just he smiles at that, that just yeah. the, because she's staring into it, and he finally gets why she was staring into the tea. Oh, well, thank you for noticing that, because again, I'm saying it's a subtle book, and some if, you, if, if people read this book quickly or they skim it, they're going to miss this whole subtext. So I'm glad that you didn't and you got that, because that's the whole thing. Nothing has changed. His wife is still drinking tea in the kitchen, but he sees her differently. Suddenly he recognizes what an amazing woman she is and what a great marriage he can have. Uh, his parents had a pretty good marriage, too, for the most part. Yes, they did. Molly and Nathan, he, he, he's father's dead, but Molly's still alive. Mm -hmm. But she has a secret. She has a secret. Am I supposed to reveal that yeah, secret? Yeah, go ahead. It happens fairly early in the book. <laughs> so. um, well, it's quite possible. Molly had an affair during her life, and there are reasons which are in the book. She had an affair when she was young, and Ben, who is 
very hung up on lineage and ancestry and having children to carry his genetic uh, makeup into the future may in fact be the product of this affair. <laughs> and his father Nathan, who he idealizes and adores, may not be his real father. So I had a little bit of fun with that, right? Because it's kind of ironic that here's this guy who's so hung up and having kids and passing his genes on to, th to the future um, may in fact be a bastard. <laughs> The book is Benevolence. I've been speaking with the author Cynthia Holtz, and Benevolence is published by Knopf Canada.